This morning I came in and I thought to myself, how about I mess around with the order of exercises that I'm doing? How about I put the calves at the end of the workout so then they're not so engorged, then I freaking can't even bend any sort of dorsiflexion into them so, you know, so I can squat, right? Um, so then I thought, okay, I used to do GHDs before, before back squats and it felt great. So let's do, let's do that. Let's reverse the order. So this morning I walked in, I was like, all right, let's do some GHDs. I did five sets of 20. Um, and that always feels good. I said in yesterday's video, man, when I do these back raises, everything, life is better. <laughs> it's as simple as that, man. It's such an awesome exercise. As Klokov says, it reverses life, basically. Everything we do, we are reaching forward. We are bending of the spine. We are sitting in a chair. We're sitting in, in the couch, in the car. Everything is about lumbar flexion. You know, rarely do we go into lumbar extension. So much so that even our... You know, coaches in gyms and trainers always say to you, say to you, never hyperextend your back. Well, here is your exercise where the forces are perpendicular to the spine, so there is no axial loading, and you can do whatever the hell you want with your spine. You can you can arch it, you can you can flex, it, you can do whatever you want because there's no force going through the spine to cause uh, discuneation. This is how I think about it. Um, say if you were deadlifting or squatting and you were either flexing or or extending your spine. Um, that's not a good thing, right? Because those little guys, those little discs in between the vertebra, it's like a pillow. You're pinching one side or the other. Like they need to be kind of like stacked equally, neutrally, so there's no pressure on one side uh, more than the other. This is how I think about it. In this exercise, there's no axial loading at all. There's no force traveling down your spine. It's just gravity. So it's perpendicular force. So it's safe. And this is why I think I feel amazing. I feel like I do 50 million sets per day. The other day, I thought to myself, why don't, I, why don't I grease the groove with this stuff? Now, if you guys are not familiar with greasing the groove, highly recommend you read Pavel Tatulin's work on this. It's, it's an it's a unbelievable method, and one day I'll go back to it, probably in the upper body form. Anyway, so that was that. I did that, felt good, and then um, something happened. So usually, sometimes I wake up in the mornings and I have the right hip pain. And usually I've, I've kind of thought to myself, it's probably when I do too much quad work that the TFL kind of comes in and hurts. Well, something happened yesterday. I'm doing sumos and I'll explain, I'm explaining to you why I'm doing sumos. Yesterday at work, I was walking around and I started feeling my TFL. Really weird. Really weird because I did GHDs and I, I did a lot of them yesterday, five sets of 20, so that's plenty. And yesterday I'm walking around and, and I started feeling the TFL just out of nowhere. Anyway, continued on, and I happened to sit down on this kind of high bench um, or high table, I guess. I just kind of sat on the, on, on the edge of it, and the way I sat on it was kind of like the high uh, hamstring, low kind of glute area. I sat down, and I sat in a way that I kind of compressed one of the hamstring uh, heads, I guess, if you want to call one of the hamstrings, one of the tendons there. And that, as soon as I kind of landed in that position, I had referred pain all the way into the hip, my hip pain, the TFL pain. So then I started kind of palpating around that kind of upper hamstring area and I started poking it and, and pressuring it and kind of massaging it. And that pain was originating from the upper hamstring. So then I thought, well, isn't this interesting? I thought this was related to the quad being too tight, the vastus lateralis, you know, uh, grabbing the hell out of the ITB band the ITB band is a tendon of the TFL, blah, 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 blah. And I thought, it's quad related. And here I am palpating the hamstring, and the hamstring spot was referring pain to the TFL area. I've called it TFL now for half a year, longer. It's probably not now, I'm thinking. Anyway. I decided to do sumo deadlifts so I can hit a different angle of the hamstrings. I'm always doing squats, which is very, very, as you can see here, massive hip flexion, very acute angles of the hip, um, both in this form and also the GHD. I'm doing both kind of like with narrow stands. Then I thought to myself, let's do some sumos so I can kind of target, maybe expose that hamstring that's kind of fallen asleep a little bit and put some blood in there. I ended up doing five sets of five with 120 kilos. Felt great. So, this is going to be my little next thought experiment on the side of the calves. So, um, I'll be telling you more about this stuff, uh, more sumos. I think there's a link between wide stance and narrow stance. People have always said, you know, one helps the other. Anyway, I'll put that to the side right now. What I'm showing you right now, though, is 
close-up side profile um, uh, video of my squat. So hopefully you realize that, I don't know if you want to go back in the video and see it, um, when I've got the bar on my back, my angle, torso angle is very, very like forward. As the weight starts to increase, it starts to straighten up. I feel that's caused by poor dorsiflexion. The more weight I have on my back, the more I can compress the ankle into positioning and the more I can just stack my body. If there's no weight on my back, then there's no additional weight forcing the ankles, the calves to stretch and then I have to kind of lean forward. I've always said it, bodyweight squats are the hardest squats to master. If you can do bodyweight squats with a, a vertical back and good positioning and a narrow stance, you're going to have no problems with weight in terms of technique. Uh, I ended up doing five sets of uh, 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 five reps with 60, 100 kilos. Um, and then I kind of zoomed out here and I show you the rest of the workout. So 140 kilos. Um, by the way, my right hip pain disappeared after sumos. Very, very, very interesting. Very interesting. So... This is really exciting for me because I've been beating around the bush now for six months about this right hip pain. Turns out the hamstring has something to do with it. And potentially the hamstring has a lot to do with it. Probably even the origin of this pain. The body's weird, man. These nerves go which way you want, man. All sorts of directions. And so it's really hard to find out with the source. That bench, I feel like I want to take it home from work and just freaking put it here as, as a trophy of, of, of a moment where I kind of work things out. Um, so anyway... That's, that's what it is, man. I, I feel really excited. Right, anyway, so this is 180 kilos. Um, by the way, once again, hip feels great. Sumos did something, warmed up the particular hamstring. So 180 kilos here. I've been really tired the last few days. But anyway, here we go. Slow, 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 slow. Last uh, three days, I've gotten up 5 o'clock in the morning um, or 4.30 in the morning. Started training at 5. Uh, today, I kind of woke up a little bit um, later. I don't have work today, but I have a whole bunch of things to do today. So still kind of earlier day. Um, and, I, and I, yeah, anyway, 180 kind of moved slow today, but I'm quite happy um, how it all kind of panned out. Lots and lots of posterior chain work today, sumos, GHDs, and then squats at the end. And then I try to finish off with calves. Like I mentioned, I wanted to put calves at the end so they don't impede my squatting. I uh, did, uh, once again, 25 kilos, ATG calves, um, 50 reps. Uh, and yep, these burn me up. These burn me up so much so that I couldn't actually do any more sets. Um, you'll see the next set. I, I failed it, basically. The, the burning in my, in my freaking planter. Um, what do you call it? Uh, the pla I guess the plantar fascia, I guess. I don't know what you call it. The bottom of your foot, man. Between the heel and the ball of your foot, that thing was lit for me, man. Uh, this is the number set number two. So that previous set was set number one. There's not, not, not a lot of them here, man. So this is the set number two. And I bailed, man. I, I think I got to like 20, 25 reps. I tried to pause and let the uh, let the burning go away. It didn't go away, man, because you're in that flex position. Your weight's on top of everything. Um, my Lord. By the way, guys, my arches have kind of lifted since I've started doing this. I know it's only been a few days, and the, 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 the burn is literally in the arch. If you have flat feet, you got to hammer this thing out, man. You'll see me here start grimacing and looking for help. <laughs> um, so anyway, I bailed. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't bear the pain anymore, man. So yesterday I did five sets of 50. Today I did set and a half, and I was done, man. Anyway, guys, this is me. The thought experiment still continues. I'm still sharing my thoughts with you guys. So hopefully uh, some of you guys are getting something out of this. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited about the whole, the whole hamstring aspect, the whole sumo aspect. Um, I'll definitely uh, talk about this a bit more tomorrow. I'll spend the whole day thinking about this in the background and uh, try and come up with something. All right, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.